you're doing today. So for today's video, I wanted to share with you guys my recommendations of watercolour supplies for beginners or anyone who just wants to try watercolours on a budget. These supplies are based on what I've learned and used personally over the years. I'm sure there's plenty of other materials or brands that can be substituted, but this isn't a review, it's just my personal recommendations. So let's get into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is watercolour paints. Art supplies can be generally categorised into two grades of quality. You've got artist grade and student grade. The artist grade materials are much higher in quality, but they're much more expensive. With that in mind, student grade supplies are fantastic for their affordability and are ideal for those who are new or just practicing. So with watercolour paints, you definitely want to start with student grade at least. The three paint sets I'd recommend from cheapest upward are Koei Norse watercolour discs, the Winsor Newton Cotman 24 pan set, and the Winsor Newton Cotman 45 half pan studio set. These watercolour discs are what I used when I first began with watercolour. You can get them on Amazon for about 10 to 15 bucks, and they come with a set of 24 colours, so I personally think it's such a good deal. Obviously though, they're not going to be mind-blowing in terms of quality or pigmentation, but they're fantastic for their price. What I like the most about them is the fact that there's just so many colours, so you can just get straight into it and start to familiarise yourself with just painting, instead of worrying too much about colour mixing, which is important later on. But if you want a step higher in quality, I'd highly recommend Winsor & Newton's half pan sets from their Cotman range. Ideally, you'd want to grab the 18 or 24 pan sets, which are still relatively affordable and they give you the same wide range of colours to get started in watercolour with. But if you have an even more flexible budget, I personally recommend the Winsor Newton's Cotman half pan studio set, which comes with a whopping 45 pans. And this here is the exact set I bought and used when I started to get really into watercolour. I think for beginners, mixing colours can be quite daunting and stressful, which makes starting with watercolour already quite scary. So while a set of 45 pans might be a little bit excessive, I think it helps beginners because it lets you go straight into painting with watercolour by having these 45 ready mixed colours. Colour mixing for sure is important, but I think it's only necessary later on once you're already familiar with the medium. Alright, so the next category of materials I want to talk about is paper. Over the years, I've come to learn that the most important material of all is paper. I am a firm believer that this is the cause of a lot of beginners' difficulties with the medium. Okay, so if you have ever tried painting on printer paper or a normal sketchbook, you probably already know how difficult and messy it can get. That moment when the paint or water just doesn't soak in properly, or dries weirdly, or it warps and bends the paper, or worse, when the paper fibres actually disintegrate and even tear, yeah, that's probably because you're using paper that isn't for watercolour. You've got to look for paper that's made for watercolour. I can't stress that enough. For beginners, I recommend looking into papers that are anywhere between 200 to 300 GSM. GSM means grams per square meter, and it refers to the weight of the paper. The higher the GSM, the more sturdy and resistant to buckling and warping when painted on. Another thing to note is paper composition. Watercolour works best on papers that are made of cotton as the paint and water soaks into the fibers properly. But unfortunately, the higher the cotton composition, the more expensive it's gonna be. Paper is generally the most expensive material, so you'll end up spending a bulk of your money investing in paper. So again, I'm going to suggest a few different paper stocks depending on budget. The first student grade paper I'm going to recommend at entry level is Canson's Montval range. To be completely honest, I myself am not in love with this paper. It's a cellulose based paper, so paint and water just doesn't work on it the same way as it would on cotton papers. But with that being said, this paper stock is extremely affordable. You can get a pad of 12 sheets for less than 10 bucks. And so it's actually a pretty ideal surface for beginners to exercise and practice on, or even colour swatch. So for exercises and practicing, yes, I fully recommend it for beginners, but if you plan to make proper paintings, I probably wouldn't. But for a few more bucks, I definitely suggest considering Fabriano's studio range. This is their student grade paper, so you can actually get a pad of 12 sheets for around 10 to 15 bucks. The paper is made of 25% cotton, but considering the price of it, it does a fantastic job, so I would highly recommend this for those starting out with watercolour. The next step up from the studio pads would be Fabriano's Artistico range, which are their artist grade papers. 
The paper is 100% cotton and 300 GSM, so it's much more expensive than the student grade papers. But obviously the quality is heaps better, so watercolour works beautifully on this paper stock. It is a much bigger price jump though, so I only recommend this to those who are more experienced. The last paper stock I'm going to recommend is Arsha's paper. This is what you will see me always painting on. It is my one true love. It just ticks all boxes. It's 100% cotton, acid free, available in weights between 185 to 640 GSM. By far, it is the paper stock that I enjoy working on the most. Its texture, its durability, and the absorption quality makes it handle water and paint like nothing else. It's just Mwah. Obviously, the downside is that it is incredibly expensive. I would only recommend Arches for experienced and serious watercolorists. Now, the last thing I do want to mention is that watercolor paper comes in three different types of textures. You've got your hot press, which means smooth. You've got your cold press, which is medium textured and rough, which is very textured. For a beginner, I would suggest hot press or cold press as people just tend to be more familiar with smooth paper surfaces. Me personally, I prefer cold press as while I do like a smooth surface to work on, I still want some texture to show in my work. It's definitely worthwhile to experiment and try out all three textures to see what suits you best. The next bunch of materials I want to talk about are brushes. So there's two different characteristics to keep in mind when it comes to brushes. The different hair types and the different brush shapes. Brushes can be made of either synthetic or real animal hair, with synthetics being much more affordable. They tend to be more springy and firm, while real hairbrushes like Kulinski or Sable are softer, hold more paints, and retain their shape for much longer. But they're much more expensive. Brushes can come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, like a classic round brush, a flat brush, or a quill mop brush, to name a few. Each shape is better suited to different types of painting. For example, round brushes are great for fine detailing because of their pointed tips. Straight up, I'm just going to suggest synthetic brushes like Taclon as one, they're much more affordable and two, I find they're actually a lot easier to work with. Honestly, you don't really need many brushes, so I suggest picking up just two or three. I'd recommend getting two round Taclon brushes, a small one for detailing and a large one for filling in areas. These two brushes alone will be all you really need to get started, but if you can, I would suggest picking up a quill mop brush for applying washes. For this, I'd recommend the Quill Mop from Treckle's Onyx collection, as these are a synthetic alternative to squirrel hair brushes. So they actually hold a lot of water and a lot softer than Taclon brushes. And that makes them super useful when painting large areas. I do want to mention though that I am part of Treckle's artist team, so I obviously have a preference. But with that being said, I stand by Treckle's quality of brushes with confidence. If Treckle isn't your cup of tea, or you have a specific or local brush brand that you prefer, I still suggest getting the same things. One, synthetic hair round brushes, and two, synthetic hair quill mop brushes. So with watercolour paints, the right paper, and some brushes sorted, you should be all set to start painting with watercolour. But there are a few other optional materials that I do want to suggest because I just think they're super useful. For example, pencils. For pencil and line work, I use Stadler Mars Lumograph pencils in either HB or 2B. I get so many questions from you guys about how my pencil lines don't smudge when I paint, but I seriously have no idea. I just use these pencils and I've never really found any issues, so I don't know what's really in them, but they just work wonders. When it comes to erasers, I recommend General's Art Gum Erasers, as opposed to your typical vinyl hard white ones. Those can sometimes be too hard and abrasive, so they actually might damage or lift the surface of the paper. Gum erasers are actually much softer, so they're less likely to damage the surface. You really want to be as delicate as you can when handling watercolour paper. Okay, so another thing that I've learnt the importance of over the years is brush care. I would wear out my brushes so quickly because I had no idea that there was brush soap or even brush restorer. For soaps, I'd recommend either Treckle's Coconut Oil Soaps or B&J's Brush Cleaner. Either of these are super easy to use, you just wet your brush, apply some soap and clean thoroughly with water. Then there's Brush Restorer, which I never actually even knew existed. It's a sort of conditioner that's to help reshape the hairs of your brush. I use it after I clean my brushes with soap to restore the springy and pointed shape to my brushes. You just work a bit of this stuff into your brush and bada bing, bada boom. Now the last and final material I want to talk about is white ink or gouache. 
these two are super, super useful in adding white highlights or details to your paintings. I personally prefer to use these as opposed to white watercolour as they're opaque so they show up really well in paintings. And yeah, that's all my recommendations for beginner supplies. Of course, any of these materials are just my suggestions. Whether you use higher quality or even cheaper materials, it ultimately comes down to personal preference and budget. You could use the absolute worst, worst materials, but still make incredible paintings, and people have proved that time and time again. It's cliche and probably obvious, but having the best quality and most expensive materials doesn't make you any better an artist. Yes, it may make the process easier or increase the longevity of your work, but that doesn't change your skill as an artist. Practice does. If you are looking into getting high quality or artist grade materials, please do feel free to check out my 2019 watercolour supplies video where I share my recommendations there. That brings us to the end of today's video. I do hope you guys found this video useful, whether you're a beginner watercolourist, an enthusiast, or even just some stranger stopping by. As always, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Don't forget to make more art and I will see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.